We create a lot of debris when cutting and sanding in our shops. And it's the sawdust you can't see that is the most dangerous to your health. The good news is there's specialized dust extractors to remove these microscopic monsters. The bad news is they're pretty expensive. And are they even worth it? For years, I've used this $29 shop vac to do all my cleanup work. And I've even figured out how to hook it up to my track saw and sanders. But while it's easy on my wallet, I'm not sure if it's dangerous to my health. In this video, we'll upgrade a typical shop vac to get it as close to a proper HEPA rated dust extractor so we can compare the price, performance, and filtration quality. We'll even add a two-stage cyclone separator and highlight the pros and cons of doing that. But first, let's talk about how much money this costs. I purchased all this equipment with my own money. It cost me $1,523. You're welcome. I agree. That's dumb. And I'm not sponsored by Festool or Rigid, obviously. And this video isn't sponsored by anyone else unless you count yours truly. But as someone who suffers from asthma and allergies and takes respiratory stuff really seriously, this was a big question I had and I wanted to share my findings with you. Now the driving question in all of this is, is the $659 price tag justified for Festool? Or in other words, is it fest drool or fest full? Starting with the rigid, I bought the shop back 12 years ago on Black Friday for 29 bucks. They're typically around 100 to 150 dollars. And so in the interest of being as fair as possible, I went out and bought a brand new six and a half horsepower shop vac for 100 dollars. So you'll be able to see how both a 12 year old shop vac and a brand new shop vac compare to the Festool. I'm going to leave the old filter in the old shop vac without a bag. We can all assume the results should be disastrous. And I'll put a HEPA filter and HEPA bag in the new one. It'll be interesting to see if there's even a difference. To get them as close as possible to the Festool CT MIDI, we're going to add a diffuser for under $17. It hooks up to the rear of the shop vac and quiets it down really well. I won't use a shop vac without this. We'll also add a HEPA filter and bag for $64. Yikes. And a quick note on this, if you only buy the HEPA filter like I first did, you got to read the fine print. It says it's made from HEPA material, but it's not HEPA rated. You have to have both the HEPA filter and the HEPA bag to get the rating and certification. So don't make the same mistake I did by only buying the filter and thinking you're good. You need both. We'll also add an auto start switch for $35. These are great. I love them and I have several of them. As soon as you turn on your tool, the vacuum starts. And after you turn off your tool, the vacuum runs for five seconds longer to clear out what's ever in the hose. And to get a hose that will fit on tools such as a track saw or a sander, I'll use the Syntec hose that you can get for 45 bucks from the Zon. The one I have is 20 feet. It's pretty awesome. I've used this for several years and I love it, but be warned, it's not anti-static and you could potentially shock yourself. Maybe. Probably. I've never been shocked, but I know other people who have. So if you're not shopping on Black Friday and you go out and buy this setup right now, you'll have a cost roughly of $261 plus tax. Now in comparison, out of the box, the Festool CT MIDI includes a HEPA filter that filters down to 0.3 micron, a bag that acts as a pre-filter that filters out 5 micron and larger. You get a 10-foot braided anti-static hose that tapers at the end, grounds to the unit. You have auto start built in. You can adjust the suction and Bluetooth is already on board. All that for $659. Ouch. That's a price difference of $398.02. The Festool CT MIDI is roughly two and a half times the cost of a tricked out rigid shop vac. Now, if you want to add a cyclone separator, you can get a dust stopper cyclone lid for $53 and a bucket for $5, bringing your cyclone total to $58. This is about the cheapest you can do. The Oneida Dust Deputy is probably better, and there's some other ones on the market that seem to be really cool, but I didn't have quick access to one, and this is the one I could find at Home Depot. The Festool Cyclone has a much better integration, but it costs, take a big deep breath, $375. That's more than the shop vac and cyclone setup combined. It's like Festool had a sales meeting where they came to the conclusion that this piece of plastic should sell for $75. And then someone raised their hand and they said, hey, I got an idea. Our kids need to go to college. Let's add $300 to the price because we can. I want to cuss. 
If that bothers you as much as it bothers me, comment below with the word college and we can all go to therapy together. So we're looking at a $319 shop vac versus a $1,034 Festool dust extractor. Actually, that's wrong. I added the Bluetooth switch to the end of the hose for $40 so I don't have to walk 10 feet to the CT MIDI to turn it on like a peasant. So our total is now $1,074. What college are those kids going to go to? Mine clearly aren't going. Vacuums are notoriously loud. Using my phone in an app I totally trust. At 12 inches away from the front, the Festool measured 84 decimals on the highest setting and 74 decibels on the lowest setting, which is actually pretty quiet and I appreciate that. My Black Friday Rigid measured 88 decimals and the brand new Rigid measured the loudest at 90 decibels. They are all pretty much on the same decibel level until you lower the suction on the Festool and the noise gets kind of bearable. Festool claims to have a CFM of 130 and Rigid claims 144. I bought an anometer that measures air velocity, not volume, and so it doesn't calculate CFM, so we can't compare that. So we'll have to stick with the meters per second setting. We'll compare nominally between the vacuums and get an idea. The old Black Friday Rigid with a dirty filter and no bag measured 7.7 .7 meters per second with the Syntec hose I got from Amazon. The new Rigid measured 12.6 meters per second with the same hose, and that was including the white filter it came with. When I upgraded to the HEPA filter and bag, it measured 12.1, which is not a bad loss of suction, especially when you factor in a higher level of resistance for the increased filtration. The Festool CT MIDI measured 13.6 meters per second. So the Festool wins this round, but barely, and it should for this price. Now when you add a Cyclone, you get a loss of suction naturally, and that really sucks. The Black Friday Rigid with the Cyclone dropped from 7.7 .7 meters per second to 5.8, which is a 25% loss of suction. And that actually makes a big difference at the end of the hose. You can definitely tell that it doesn't suck as good. The new Rigid with the Cyclone dropped from 12.1 to 10.9 meters per second or a 10% loss in suction which wasn't really bad and I didn't really notice it. The Festool with the Cyclone dropped from 13.6 to 10.5 meters per second or a 23% loss in suction which was disappointing but still in the neighborhood as the brand new Rigid. The Festool bag is easy to install and remove, and I really love how it clips in and how you can close off the port when disposing of it, which keeps you from breathing in all of the nasty stuff you really don't want. I've heard of people being able to fill this bag up so full that it's a solid brick. That's probably not a great idea, but if you do that on accident, Festool has an electronic feature called the MMC, which stands for the Multiple Material Control, whatever that means. Basically, it will shut down the motor when it starts to heat up protecting your vacuum. And the shot vac isn't that smart. That's pretty cool. The shot vac bag takes a little more effort to install, but is doable. And the HEPA bag also has a way to close it off, which I appreciate. The Cyclone does drop the suction significantly, and I'm not a huge fan of that. However, it doesn't seem to be affecting the total performance. I still have enough suction to clean things up, and I was surprised by how much Cyclones catch using a track saw. Track saw chips are bigger than you think, and this was a big surprise for me. Regarding the Festool Cyclone, $375 is a lot of money, but I don't regret buying it, I only regret the price. I bought the Cyclone for three specific reasons. First is I thought it would make good content to test it out. But second, and most importantly, I wanted to extend the life of my bags as much as possible. My theory is that it's easier to see the sawdust in the clear container versus a bag that's hidden away that I can't see, and I can easily remove this and toss out the sawdust and reset. The more this fills up with heavier sawdust, the longer I can extend my bag, which will then in turn extend my $71 HEPA filter. Besides the price, the only thing I don't like is how this attaches. They use Velcro. Fine for $75, but for $375, this is disappointing and I expect a little bit more engineering. An additional feature I like is that the sustainer system allows me to easily store sustainers on the top of the Cyclone. Now if you're a woodworking professional, this system and interface is worth the cost because of the time savings and the ease of use that it gives you every day on the job. But for the average homeowner, not so much.
I'm not a fan of the makeshift bucket cyclone. It performs okay, but it adds to the bulk and complexity, and you get what you pay for. Yeah, you can make a cart like you see all over the internet, but I'd rather have the compact nature of the Festool that stacks and is an all-in-one unit that can travel. Now, when you consider the cost of plywood these days and your time and energy that would go into making a custom cart with your shop vac and a cyclone built in and a host storage and all this stuff, you're probably near the price point of the Festool Cyclone anyway when you account for materials in your time. And so I was fine going with the Festool Cyclone even though I hate the price. Welcome to the most shocking controversial part of this video. I hope you've popped some popcorn. Filtration is one of the main selling points for these high-end dust extractors because the critical point is trapping the dust you can't see. Now we can split hairs all day long on CFMs and meters per second, but they're all pretty close and they suck in a good way. But you only get one set of lungs. Being able to limit and control the amount of fine particles in the air is everything in my estimation. Now if a vacuum is quiet and has strong suction, but is a hazard to your health because it spews hazardous fine particles in the air, and it's worthless. And the more of the dust you can collect at the source, the healthier you'll be. And the more of that dust you keep in the bag or trap in the filter, the healthier you'll be. And so that's the main reason why I bought the HEPA Festool. But was it a mistake? Now, Rigid claims that they can deliver HEPA-level filtration when their filter and bags are installed together. They say the combo removes 99.97% of all particles, 0.3 microns and larger, from the air. Festool's HEPA filter makes the same claim at removing 0.3 microns and larger from the air. Now, since we're talking about microns, look at this illustration I got from the EPA. The diameter of a human hair is 50 to 70 microns. The diameter of fine sand is 90 microns. And what we're talking about is filtering out 0.3 microns. And so in a moment, you'll see some readings from the air quality monitor that I have, and you'll see two numbers that are really, really important. One is PM10 and one is PM2.5. That stands for particulate matter that is 2.5 microns in size and 10 respectively. So take note on this image at how small those are on this graphic in comparison to a human hair, especially the 2.5. And then we're going to go smaller than that at 0.3 microns. Now to test the quality and effectiveness of these filters, I bought an air quality meter to test the air near the exhaust ports. I tested each vacuum setup hooked up to a track saw and I cut 10 strips of inch and a half wood and I also sucked up a ton of sawdust. I placed the air quality meter near the exhaust blower on each vacuum to measure the fine particles that would be escaping from the filter. Now here are the screenshots of the results and let me walk you through what I found. On the top half of the screen, you have these large numbers. And in this case, you have a one, zero, and a two. And that is the overall health rating or health score this device is giving you at those particle levels. So in this case, it's given us a score of one when it's reading PM 2.5, giving us a score of zero when it's reading PM 1, and giving, giving us a score of two when it's measuring PM10. Now, zero is healthy and 130 is hazardous, right? So generally anything under 30 or 35 score is good and healthy. Anything over 30 or 35 is get out of there, you're damaging your health. So on this first reading, I'm showing you the 12 year old rigid with a dirty filter and no bag hooked up to my track saw and sucking up dust and it's saying we're basically as good as it gets. Now, if you drill down on the numbers a little further, out of all of these numbers you can look at, look at the 0.3 micron level. It's detecting only 3,900 particles that are that small in the air around it, which is pretty low when you consider what's going on here. Now, if you go over to the new rigid, it has the same health score. And when you drill down on the numbers, especially for the 0.3, it's actually picking up more. How about the Festool? How does the Festool stack up? Well, it got basically the same health score, but a little bit worse on the PM10 level. And when you look at the 0.3 micron score, it's measuring 4,110 of these particles in the air. And the crappy $29, really, really old and dirty shop vac was only spitting out 3,900. And so to this test in these surroundings and in this situation, the 12 year old $29 shot vac without a HEPA filter and a clogged filter at that 
was actually the safest thing that I have in my shop, which is so surprising. I did the test again, just sucking up dust, and I got very similar results. Again, the old shop vac with the Amazon hose and a dirty filter scored better than my Festool. <sighs> I hope my wife doesn't see this video. Now there's a couple of ways to interpret this data. The first and obvious is that I'm not a scientist, this isn't a clean room, and I'm really not sure how much we can trust a $200 meter that I bought on Amazon. Either you can take this data at face value and go, well, a cheap shop bag is just as good. And maybe that's right, and maybe that's wrong. I don't really know. Or you can take this data and go, well, this guy is a dummy in his workshop using a tool off of Amazon and it's not clean and, and there's not a control and all this stuff. And I think you're probably right. Like, I'm not sure that I trust my ability to do this. Or that maybe there's a mixture of the two. After sleeping on the results for a little bit, I thought, well, maybe this doesn't read anything dangerous at all. So I set up a new experiment where I poured a ton of sawdust around the area and look at what it read. it actually was able to pick up all these particle matters and give me a very, very high and healthy score. So that led me to think, okay, well, it's, it's, it seems to be working. So I did this test again, where I set this near the old shot vac that was dirty, and I tried it again, and I got similar results. Here's the screenshot. Then I thought, well, maybe this diffuser is really blocking all this. So I took the, the diffuser off the blower so that pure exhaust would come out, did the test again. Here's the results I got. Pretty similar. Then I thought, maybe the cyclone is doing it. So I pulled the cyclone out and I put the hose straight into the shot vac, did the same test, and got the same result. I'm honestly not sure how to interpret this. I have zero confidence in my scientific ability to really do a proper test, and I have zero confidence in a $200 monitor from Amazon. What I am coming away with is whatever this is reading, it's basically all reading these vacuums the same. So, do I regret spending $1,000 on my Festool setup? No, and here's why. This is completely a personal preference, but I've always been frustrated with the size of the shop vac and how sloppy the hose and cord management is. I like to keep my shop pretty clean and organized and I don't have a lot of space, and so being able to stack things and nest things is really important for me. And it's a little thing, and I'm not sure it's a double, triple, or quadruple the price thing, but it's a little thing. But the compact size of the CT MIDI and the hose garage where you can store the hose in there is really something I appreciated and enjoyed. But I wasn't willing to spend the extra three or four hundred dollars for this vacuum. So I rationalize it to myself by saying since I have allergies and asthma, I need this HEPA filter and I need this HEPA vacuum. So because of that, I justified buying the festival because I wanted the bells and the whistles. Now, if you're a professional and you're making house calls and this is your job, then you can make a case that spending more on this Festool is worth it for your business uh, for a couple of reasons. You have the system that you're working with, and so instead of carrying in all these different things that may or may not work well together, you could roll into a job with your dust extractor, with your track saw sustainer, and your sander sustainer, or your domino, or whatever, and you could get in and out of a job really quickly with a little bit less effort than carrying a bunch of stuff. But then there's also the added perception. If you walk into a client's home and you have a high hourly rate and they see the same vacuum that you have is in their garage, they may not want to pay you that. But if you walk in with a vacuum they've never seen, with a brand they've never seen, they may automatically assume you're really, really good. And you probably are. It's kind of wrong that people judge professionals by what they drive and what they wear and the tools that they have. But it's kind of human nature, and so you can use that in your favor. But is a Festool dust extractor that's $1,000 worth it for the average homeowner? I don't think so. But for those of you who do want justification for your tool addiction, here's five more reasons you might want one. While you can get close with the shop vac, there's at least five features that the CT extractors give you that you can't get on the shop vac no matter how much you hack them. Do you need them? No. But do you want them? Probably. The first is Bluetooth. If you're using a cordless tool, such as a track saw, you can trigger the extractor when you power on the tool. But Festool did something brilliant here. They made their batteries Bluetooth and not the tool, which is different than what 
people like Makita have done. So if you have a cordless track saw and a cordless drill, all you need is one Bluetooth battery to trigger your vacuum. Now the uses for cordless Bluetooth are pretty niche and kind of a stretch, but it is kind of a cool technology and I like the foresight of a Festool putting the technology in the batteries and not all of the tools. Again, is this overkill for a homeowner? Absolutely. But if you're a professional serving clients in a home, if you can speed up your house calls and eliminate excessive cleaning time, even by a little bit over the long run, you'll get an ROI on that. Now, is this a luxury for sure? Absolutely. But if you add the $40 switch to the end of your hose, you can now turn on and off your extractor without having to make a 10 foot pilgrimage to the unit. First world problems, I know, but I love this little remote. The second thing is the anti-static hose and grounding. This hose won't shock you. Now I like the Syntec hose I've been using for years, but I've fallen in love with this braided, tough anti-static hose. I just wish it was longer and not so expensive. The third thing is you can adjust the power of the suction on the Festool. If you're sanding, you often don't need as much suction as you think, especially if you're using a Festool sander where they're designed to work together. You can dial down the CFM so you can get the perfect amount of surface tension, causing the sander to essentially float and eliminating swirl marks. There's few things worse than getting to the end of a project, applying finish, and discovering swirl marks you created by sanding. The fourth is the manual filter clean function. It's pretty cool. The higher end extractors built for drywall finishing have auto clean so, they, so the filter gets cleaned every three seconds or so automatically. But for the version I have, it's manual and I've honestly forgotten about it. But I manually clean the filter during my test before and after and I increase the air velocity by 10% just by hitting a button. Being able to clean the HEPA filter without interfacing with it is a big deal as it keeps you away from the risk of breathing in the dust. The shot vac, you have to be near it and physically clean it, and I would recommend wearing a high quality mask doing that. It's not a lot of fun. Fifth, the MMC electronics on the Festool is a secret few people know about. The fact that the extractor can monitor the heat of the motor, sense when a bag is too full and shut off to protect itself, is pretty wicked awesome. A $29 Black Friday special isn't gonna do that. So after using a shot vac for my track saw and sanding for several years and using the CT MIDI for the last nine months, I can say that if you're spending a lot of time doing woodworking that makes fine sawdust, the Festool or any quality dust extractor is a smart investment for your health, but it's more of an investment because of its convenience, the bells and whistles, and most importantly, the system that you're working with with other tools. Now you do only get one set of lungs and you should take care of them. Now while I'm not a health professional or a scientist, nor do I play one on TV, it seems to me that having a vacuum or dust extractor alone is a great step in saving your lungs. Now, if you're a beginner woodworker or homeowner, especially if you're just starting out or you're on a budget, I think a shot vac with a high quality filter in a bag is just fine, despite the positive readings I got with one without a bag and an old filter. Now, eventually you may want to upgrade for some of the bells and whistles that you'll get with the Festool, but you're probably best suited investing your money in some tools that you need right now. Now, to state the obvious, a good quality $30 mask will go a long way too. And most importantly, they don't cost a semester in college. Now, I splurge on the Festool and I love it. I still don't like how much it costs, but every time I complain about the cost of quality tools, my friend Peter reminds me that nobody gets into woodworking to save money. And he's right. Now, if after watching this video, you still want a Festool dust extractor, welcome to the Tool Snob Club. It's great to have you. I just suggest that you not show this video to your spouse or your CPA.